Okay, little clapper board today. Little clapper board, right. Mic, 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 camera, camera. Weighted down. Not gonna fall in the water. Well, I don't know. Don't, 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 <laughs> and we're back between Tietes with a star from season two, Tommy Thompson. How are you doing, sir? When I when I first learned it was what it was all about. Yes. <laughs> That's right. It was on the realization of. Ah, oh, oh, now I, now get, I get it. Yes, yes. Now yes. I know why we're sitting Maybe on these things. Show that clip again. <laughs> Dear. So we're at the Lord of the Boat Show. It's day, day three. Three. Feels like five. Does it? Ah, absolutely. Yeah. No, we've been we've been busy. Can I'm, I can I vent for a minute? Can I can I vent for just a minute? Please. Roll call. <laughs> I consider this a public service announcement. Yes, you have to take your shoes off. I don't care what your feet look like. No, your kids cannot go up in the tower. Speaking of kids, no, you cannot drop off your kids in our boat as their romper room. They cannot bounce on the beds. The lemons are not real. The chips that are in the bowl were just there for decoration five days ago, but you want to eat them, go ahead, I don't care. And God, no, you cannot use the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, they just don't know. We've had a lot of traffic through this boat, so trust me, it's been amplified over the, not just the last two days, but we've done the Newport, Norwalk and Annapolis boat shows, so I'm, uh, I think I need a break. You need a break? <laughs> We've, the, the show season's only just started, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been remarkable, the traffic we've had on this boat. It's, um, by day five of this boat show, we'll have no less than 50 people that will be coming and saying, I was told I have to come see this boat. So, well, it's, so, just quickly on your points there, I'm, I'm creating two, I'm, I'm going to create two things because right. of what you just said. So, first thing is I'm creating a thing called Boat Show Rules to my 18 year old self. I will, I will post it. If it's a video, I'll play it on a loop on the TV, I promise. I'm up to almost 100. And every rule is number one. Every rule is number one. That's and I'm going to do Boat Show Rules, right. forget, I, for we didn't even get into timers. opening and closing the cabinets. Every single cabinet. Every. Well, we just did that. Uh, I, we were just saying, I think it's instinctive. You open one, uh, and then you have to it, open the second. Uh, it doesn't look that much different. <laughs> but yes, I've it's inquisitive. Fine. Open it's, every cabinet if you want. The boat's built You know solid. what, you know what it is, it. though? It shows that they're interested. Yeah, okay. They want to see what's in the I second guess. one. Like, that's what I said. I think I need a break. I, I <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. So... At the last show, you were relaunching the 31. That's right. 30, yeah, a 35 foot version of the 31. Of the 31. Correct. Yes. I didn't realize at the time, everybody loves that 31. Yeah, it, it, it's remarkable. It's not, uh, I found it fascinating yesterday. I had a, a young couple on here that don't remember the 31, and they didn't have any idea why they liked it. They just said it looks like a classic boat. And of course, that's why we did it, because the 31 had a shape and a feel and a posture in the water that people just loved. But for me, it's more remarkable to see someone that has no clue what it came from. <laughs> they only look at it now and say, wow, that's a good looking boat. So that, that of course, we sell to most, most of our buyers are, are quite familiar with the, the 31. And they're buying it because it's got that look and that you know, low profile and enormous cockpit and great ride. And it's so recognizable. I was, Absolutely. I've you been can see it from a, well, we all know the harbors all over the world that have the 31s that are their Bertram country, but that, that 35 is recognizable. <laughs> What's from Bertram Miles. country? I, it's a joke because, I, I, don't, I shouldn't say it's a joke, but everybody around the world thinks they're Bertram country. I'll go travel to boat shows and they go, you know, this is Bertram country here in, in Sydney. <laughs> it's like, yes it is. <laughs> Truthfully, everywhere you go, there's little pockets all over the world in the Med, in Cabo, in Panama, in Tokyo, that people uh, they just love their they love their Bertrams, man. Yeah, it's made our made my job pretty easy. What is the history of Bertram then? Um, recent history? Uh, no, is, how did it start? And all that. Uh, uh, Dick Bertram. Everybody knows the story uh, with him and Ray Hunt um, designing that. All right. First. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Dick Bertram uh, was a, a, a quite the, the, the yachtsman, basically. He, and, and he ran into a guy, I'm gonna simplify, oversimplify it, I hope I don't oversimplify it, but uh, ran into a guy named Ray Hunt, who had this 
cool little boat running around and Dick said, that's a, that boat rides nice. Oh, well, you know, let's do something together. So they, um, I got the drawings in my office from 1960, 61 of the, of the first 31, basically the boat we're talking about, the 30, the 31 that uh, we copied for the 35. Or and that's what replicated. kicked everything off. Uh, that was, it was the ride. It was, it was just at that time, that deep V was, was remarkable to everyone. And they, Dick turned it over and built an amazing boat. They built almost uh, 1,800 of the 31s. Um, only to be surpassed by the 28-foot Bertram that they built over 2,200 of, uh, and that's why they're all. That's why my job is so easy because there's something like 12,000 Bertrams in the world that people love and redo, and we think, frankly, that 35 is a boat that in 35, 40 years they'll be redoing again. Yeah, you know, it'll be the new boat that they completely. Comp it's cycles. It, yeah. You know, everything comes back into that's fashion. Right. That's right. Yeah. Blimey, did you get bought by Brunswick at some point, or were you? Part of no, no. Uh, the ownership. There's been three or four ownership ownership over the year. Dick Bertram actually sold it in the mid '60s. Um, the last ownership of, of, of what do you mean he the, sold it in the mid '60s? He started in '61. He, he did, but he he actually sold the company uh, somewhere in the mid '60s. He sold it to Whitaker, I believe, was the company he sold it to back then. It passed hands a couple times on a corporate level, um, and then uh, a couple of Italian companies owned it in the early '90s, and then. Actually, fortunately, Ferretti Group bought it, um, and they did an amazing job for 15 years. Uh, built a lot of boats, um, did some amazing stuff with that spiral staircase that goes up on the 63. Um, but Mr. Gavio, um, our principal, bought it uh, back uh, March of 2015, probably a year before I, I spoke to you last, and um, when we debuted that that 35, the uh, number one, and. Uh, just wanted his his uh, his instructions were make it an American sport fishing company again. You know, for all that <laughs> Freddie Grip did great. You know, we we felt like we needed to bring it back to an American designer, to a you know American manufacturer. Bought a place in Tampa, and uh, since then we built 20 of those, 20 you know, up to 20 of the 35s. 20, 19 of them delivered already, and uh, we're sitting on hole number one of the 61s with two or three more on the line behind it. It's interesting that. An Italian company would buy. Well, this hasn't got a fire escape on the top. In fact, none of yours have. Is that you can add it though, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's about. I think it's in this day and age, it's about 70, 30 hard top to, to tower. Because it's amazing. As an English person and as Europeans, we don't get the whole <laughs> tower thing. It's just like, <laughs> it is a fire escape. It's a great. It's a great view. It's a. If it's you a, have. If you haven't run across the Bahama Bank and the and the tower of a sport fish, you. Uh, you haven't lived. Yeah. Ha no. You have to do it to appreciate it. It's amazing. <laughs> the view from up there is spectacular. But I think this is the difference between American boats and U.S. Um, American boats and European boats. Yeah. I'm going to oversimplify it again. I, I like to use the the truck analogy. Can you imagine if an Italian company bought Chevy or Ford? What they might do to it? It'd be pretty. It'd have some nice leather inside, but it might not be as practical. That's a hell of a thing to think about. Because Amer Americans do pickup trucks. That's what we do. You know, there's no, what other company, even Toyotas, but they're building them in the US. They knew they had to make it an American truck. So mm. that's kind of what sport fishes are. Sport fishes are, are done best, best by the Americans. Just a, it's our market. I don't yeah. know if it, why, it's but. It's amazing. This whole part of the show is mm -hmm. sports fish, isn't it? That's right. Dear God. So this is the new one. This is it. This is the 61. And we're, we're, we're sitting in the best spot possible because that's the, that's one of the, one of the four wows of the boat. Uh, that, no, we get uh, every boat show, we call it, we call it the four wows. Actually, we call it the, since I'm being honest, we do, we call it the three wows and the holy shit. And, and <laughs> those are, the first wow is you walk, they walk in the cockpit and go, wow, look at the size of this cockpit. And then of course they walk through that door, the air conditioning hits them, and they look out that window, which you know from the inside isn't, you don't see the tint, and they go, wow, look at that view. And you gotta imagine that view doing 43 knots, you know, across the water. Uh, they go to the flybridge, look at that layout up there, and they go, wow, look at all the comfortable spots sitting forward. And then of course the last one, they walk, go downstairs, and they take a turn and go down to that master straight room, and they say, holy shit, <laughs> this boat has a full beam master. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, if you're here in 
an hour and a half, we, we can't talk to each other because it's, it's going to be slammed. Slammed. We're just, uh, we're like the... And the, obli and the, um, the swearing is going to be off the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the one thing I noticed when I walked in, it doesn't feel like a sports fish. Yeah, I, probably the worst insult I've gotten from anybody on the boat is it's too nice to fish. <laughs> Yes. You know, it's, that's yeah. a, it's a yeah. great, it's a compliment because it is, we built an amazing interior. Uh, you know, this one, okay, we've got carpet in the, as you walk in in the salon. That's for a cruiser probably. Uh, okay. Standard will actually put the hardwood flooring throughout. Who uh, Again, it's, it's back to that 60-40. Um, well, we all know who really buys the boat. Exactly. So <laughs> I, I, t I showed a gentleman the boat last night and I, I said, no, hold on. She has to come. And afterwards, he goes, "Yeah, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> you know what you're doing. You know where you know yeah. where you're mark. You know we where the, the pen gets." We, we get a lot of those. I don't know. If most married guys get this, and I don't. Uh, whenever you you say something smart or or, or that, that irritates your wife, we all get the backhand in the chest. I've actually seen a few of those where a woman will walk in, and her husband sitting right next to him, and she'll smack him in the chest and go, "Look at this. <laughs> this is." You know, we didn't, and we didn't invent. We didn't invent the forward window. You know, the boats were built. Sport fishing boats were built with forward windows from the 70s and 80s. You know, they just started leaking. The boats got faster, and they started going in rougher and rougher water, and they, they started leaking. The, the aluminum. Well, there's kind of the irony because I'm looking at that boat right there. He didn't have windows, but they paint a black mask. Yeah. Almost. That looks fine. To look like it's a window. Yeah. But it's just a sleeker look. You know, they like they like the full wrap around it. And we're able to accomplish that. This looks like a wrap. Yeah. But the nice surprise is when you get inside and realize that's, that's a window. That's why it was all white, because it leaked. Well, yeah, a lot of guys converted back to not doing it. They didn't do the windows up front. Um, yeah, it, it, the, the aluminum framing and stuff, the technology wasn't there. It's probably the simplest. Now we've got carbon fiber that's holding up the flybridge. We've got basically military gray glass that's sitting here. It's, it's the, the technology allows it's it now. It's still done out of your new facility then in town. Absolutely, yeah. Good God, and you've just set that up in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, that's why I say we built 2035s there already, so we've built, you know, we built, we built 1061s already, if you look at it that way. <laughs> yeah, we've got some, we've got some great, great, great craftsmen over there. They're doing an amazing job, yeah. and I think it's evident by what's, what, the, the fit and finish of what's inside this boat and the now, response we're, we're getting to it. Now, we're not to talk about politics okay. on the show. There's two things, lighting and politics, but <laughs> we'll touch on a slight economic tweak that's happened in the last two years. Your purchase seems to have coincided quite nicely with the upturn. Oh sure, yeah. Well, I mean, it's uh, th there's definitely there's been a lot of activity. This show has been. Yesterday was the nicest surprise. With the change in the time frame of the boat show, we used to be a Thursday to Monday. Uh, now we're a Wednesday to Sunday. We were all kind of reluctant last year, and, and we were worried about Thursday because Wednesday is always going to be the VIP day. You're going to get great guys that come. Traffic's lighter, but you're going to get the people that want to come and. You get the press, you get the, the brokers, but you get some really good clients. Thursday we were worried about because it's kind of stuck in the middle there. We're like, it's not the weekend, people aren't gonna take off from work. Ah, yesterday was amazing. And I, I don't think it was just because this boat's amazing. I thought the boat show was quite busy yesterday. So yeah, it seems to be an active market. We'll, we've already got um, number four was confirmed uh, two days ago by a gentleman from Japan. Number three is going to Japan as well. Number five is going to San Diego. Um, I'd be really, really, really surprised if uh, one, two, and six, and we're not talking about delivering a boat in January, March of 2000, you know, 20 really soon here. So we're very happy, very happy with the response. I know it's hot, but I just want to know about you quickly. What's your, your, your like, chief job? Chief I, I, run, I, run, no, I run sales from here in Lauderdale. I run the sales office. I have the, the pretty office over there on 17th Street. I, I, I visit the factory about once every 10 to 14 days. Um, okay. So I get the, I probably, I don't have to deal with the dust as much. <laughs> the fact <laughs> that smell of fiberglass is awesome. I love visiting there oh, though, it's amazing. God. It's amazing. They. So how did you get, where were you before? I've been around the brand. I've been, I, 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 a little bit of a journeyman. I was a yacht captain. I was a sport fish captain. Uh, um, and I, I became a yacht broker. The same cycle most guys go through that get married okay. and have kids. But I, um, I've been around the Bertram brand for darn near 25 years. I was. I worked for Richard Bertram Yachts, which was across the street from the factory What's in Miami for many years. Uh, Dick, uh, Richard, Bertram, uh, Richard Bertram Yachts was a brokerage that Dick Bertram started um, pretty much at the same time. The same guy? It was, his, it was his, his brokerage, his sales arm. So he had the factory across the street, he had Richard Bertram across the street um, Makes from that. Makes it and sells it. That's right. Actually continued in the, in the, in the sales for, for many years after he sold the factory. 
And that company's still going, isn't it, Richard? Uh, it sure is. Yes, sir. Sure is. Yeah. But he's he's out of the game, or is he? Um, uh, Dick Bertram off? passed away. I was I was of all places. I was fishing. I was fishing the Bertram Hatteras shootout, in I think 2001 or 2002 when it, when he got word that he passed away. So yeah, he's a was fortunate enough to get to spend a little bit of time with him. So. But his legacy certainly does continue. Oh, absolutely. Every day. Uh, I, our Morgan Bertram was obviously. Uh, one of our brokers and our and our our, our ambassador, we, probably more oh, so appropriately. Oh, still family in it. Absolutely, yeah. It's fun to. That's one of the people funny, love getting to meet one him. One of the great things about this industry, it, the, the families continue through. That's tr it's true. Really do. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's wonderful to see you again. Yeah. Good. I'm glad I could be here. Do you need to do any more venting? No. <laughs> I'm no? good. You got an idea, sir? I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. Good to see you, sir.